And a bonus? If you've got milk jugs, then you don't know what to do with them. Are you going to tell everybody we're going to do an update on the deck? You just came running out. Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California, and I can't believe that it has been two weeks since I did it, the deck. Well, right now, we are still working on the deck, aren't we, Kitty? We're doing a lot of work, but I figured I'd go ahead and do a zip around and show you what's going on. Look, I got a gazebo. This is a small one. Let me back up and show you what this is. This one is like five by eight. It's just a little thing. And Gary said, you know, you try to do videos making water fountains and different things in the bright sun. This is completely south facing. And let me tell you something, we're cloudy. We've been cloudy for days. But when summer comes, this place is as hot as can be. So he figured, go ahead and let's get this. They're cheap right now, too. They're kind of clearing them out, getting ready for Christmas. Isn't that unreal? So anyways, I went ahead and got this. And I really like it. I've actually been doing a lot of work under it. When it is sunny, I can come out here and work and not have this blazing sun in my eyes. And yeah, I have to put a hat on and everything. But still, it makes it easier, doesn't it, Kitty? And you've been laying under it, too. So where should we start? And then I'll tell you what's going on and a surprise at the end, which I guess you may or may not have known two weeks ago. Okay, this is where, see what I did? This is a tote lid and it is strapped on. Literally just put on with zip ties and that tote lid strip here holds all my stakes. So if you've got a place you can put, like if you've got totes and you got the lids and you're cutting them up, you can make a holder for your stakes. Got celery. And what's in the back here? Nothing yet. I just layer, 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 layer. It is really good. Now, my dill is dying back, so I may get some more dill. This is why it grew all winter. Now I've got a celery. Oh, I have to do something on celery. I have to remind you how bad celery is. It's not, but it has its issues. Oregano. This thing's been here for years. I should add some soil in there. Oh, I know what that is. I think it's lettuce. Nothing yet. What I'm doing is I'm slow, slowly going through all this and deciding what I'm keeping, what I'm replanting, new things that are going in. So I'm kind of analyzing and it's not clean. This is not the way I want it to look. I'm just planting. This I'll probably leave. I've got beautiful garlic chives. Yes, I've got celery. This is a cutting from a collard from my yard that I stuck there and it's growing beautifully. And of course, I've got lettuce throughout here. So I'll probably... I'll let the lettuce do its thing and we'll take the celery out, yes. And then this is my stevia. I brought this over last year because I only had stevia in the front with the ginger and the turmeric. This grew wonderful. And this is all from one plant that I bought years ago. It was either Home Depot or Lowe's, I can't remember. Tomato is coming up here and it looks like it's, oh, it's already got tomatoes. I'm gonna leave that. See, it's layered and I gotta take this out. What I do, and I'll show you better, is I pull these out, but then I cut the root off. And the reason I cut the root off is it's gonna have microbes, probably baby earthworms. You wanna leave that in the soil, but the top you don't need. What you do with that is you start collecting. Because when you collect it, this is your soil. We're gonna talk about soil in a minute too. Purslane everywhere. They pop. There was a seed there. And what happens? Oh, it wasn't. See that? Can you see that? Let me see. I've, I've done a whole video on this. These things pop and then all these black seeds grow. They just drop off and they, it's kind of like bam. And then they pop and they go into all the pots. Here I'm just starting to layer. I'm thinking of putting some pieces and skins of maybe ginger or turmeric in here. Just let it do its thing and just leave it. Take care of the tomato plant that's back there that's doing wonderfully. Look at this, just came up on its own. It's a volunteer. This is lettuce. The goldfinch is coming and eat it. This is purple basil. That was from last year, grew back. So I think I'm gonna leave that. I actually like it just the way it is. Do you like it? Yes, you like it. This I haven't done anything, and what's hindering a lot of this is there's so much purslane in it. But oh, my pepper's red. How come I didn't notice that this morning? Uh, anyways. The basket protects the, this trunk. This is old already. That poor little pepper is old, but it's doing so well. And then I've got some beans I stuck in there. You know what I do? I'll show you. I start beans. This is red runner beans, uh, scarlet runner beans. Sometimes I do it with green beans. Start them in a cup. This, see, no, no holes on the bottom. 
on a paper towel and it's, this is too far already but I'm gonna get those planted today and as soon as they come up I start sticking them where I want them so I know exactly where they are so I've got some beans coming up there they improve the soil all right here it's probably exactly the same as it was last time except Gary found this and he put it there so I can put my stuff there and that works out really good in the corner and then I've got some Swiss chard more oregano celery coming up the lettuce I had a toey coming in here eating my lettuce so what I did was this is something I haven't even done a video on let's step over here I actually made holes in here and I zip tied this on so I've got two strips as you can see let me back up from a tote lid then it's zip tied on and see when I want to get my lettuce I have to hold it further back now I can just lift it. It's just put on with clothespins. And now I keep harvesting. That's why they're, they don't look that big. Now they're going to try to bolt. But see all the leaves are gone? We just eat, eat, eat. But got a lot of baby co babies coming up. I sprinkled some more seeds in. So as soon as I think they're done, I'll cut out the adult ones. We'll eat those and let the babies continue and take off. But if you can do that too. I put up a video for members only. Only because I did something back in the fall, I think it was, and I did it with sticks. You can do the same thing with just sticks from you know, branches from trees, like this. This is an old branch from, from a tomato plant. And I stuck it in there and I made something real quick just to hold the tool in place because things were getting to my lettuce. And it, that's free. You just have the tool and you drape it over sticks. The reason I put it on the members, not to say, but I want to thank all my members too because for supporting the channel. Channel, thank you so much. I put it on there because it's really not a video to me. I just was carrying my camera around and I talked about draping tool on things in a quick fix. And I looked at that. This isn't really a, a video, so I was going to delete it the other day because I'm cleaning up my phone that's full. And then I just threw it up on members. If you really want to see it, let me know and I'll go ahead and launch it for everybody. I just didn't want to bore everybody. Okay, so everything here is the same. I still have my old carrots. It's now like a house plant. You see my carrots. Look how big they are. Nobody's going to eat that. It'd be as a woody, terrible thing to eat. But I can't get over it. It's two years old. All right. I'm going to make sauerkraut out of my little head of cabbage right away. My carrots, you probably saw the other video, are starting to pop up. That's what happens. It could take a week, whatever, but they're alive, they're green, and they'll all pop. And then once they, they're the little tiny baby carrots, go back and see the video on carrots that I transplanted. Once they start to set new roots, because they're working underneath first, then they'll pop up and I'll have carrots in there. And that's gonna be really good. This is real onions. I think they're yellow onions. I bought a whole bunch. I might have dill. I bought a whole bunch of them and only two of them made it at the store. I'm going to do my own. All right. This is the bush squash. Now, I was having problems with it. I know I was using the soil from Aldi's. That was not that good. Then I know some of you have been having problems with other soil. My daughter had a problem with um, Expert Gardener. I think it's ours. It's, it's from Walmart. It's their generic one. And she said it looked like sawdust. So here's the problem. Here's my guess. I think a lot of those soils, because there's such a demand in potting soil and garden soil right now, I think they're packing them a little early, which means the soil isn't completely broke down and it's pulling from the plants the nitrogen. There's no nitrogen in there because it's pulling. It's still breaking down. You can fix that. Some of you have said you're going to throw it out. Don't you dare throw it out. You can use that on the bottom. What you do is there's two ways of fixing it. You can grow beans. This is beans. You saw how I grow my beans and I stick the bean in there. I've got two beans. Beans will fix the nitrogen in there right away as well as leaves. You can pull leaves off of plants. It doesn't really matter what I prefer colored. And then just make a hole and you cover it up. That will change the soil right away. That one's making a big comeback. There are leaves buried in there. This one is just starting. Look at this. See all the new growth in there? Now, I'm not crazy about this plant because I think it's going to be too small. Another one like the tomato. But it is making, clearly making a comeback there. So that is doing real good. And I've got purslane everywhere. So you can fix the soil. Do not throw soil away. Unless it was toxic, which I do not believe it was, you don't throw soil away. So you fix it. All these containers, you know how I put shredded paper, leaves. I showed you anything that you're going to take off. 
broken branches, all this becomes your soil again. All of it. You don't throw it away. So it's doing okay. This one had a problem with the stalk. It was too thin, so I staked it up and wrapped the stalk with tool. That's why I love tool. Literally brought it around, and I can't believe this thing is just taking off now, all new, by just reinforcing it up. It's not a good way to grow zucchini. But it is that, see it's zucchini squash bush baby back there. I have never grown it. I'm gonna stick with Black Beauty for now on. Celery, that's the way you grow celery in its own pot. Let's see, that is that is the hummingbird's lunch. They love that plant. And then here, this is just old beans. I don't know if they'll make a good comeback or not. She's, she's watching. We're not here yet. This is gonna be a video. I haven't even, see I just, I'm starting to layer. This is just a cutting from a firecracker plant. We're not gonna talk about that today because that is something I just came up with and I'm crazy about that. So I'll do a whole video on that. More beans. This is a tomato plant that was planted in the Aldi's and I took it out, it's Aldi soil and it didn't do well. I know a lot of you can take bags, you can take soil you can buy it, cut it in half and have two bags, or you can lay it on its side or upright and you can plant, plant straight in it. But here's the thing, you're gonna spend $10 or $15 on a bag of soil and grow one plant? We don't think so, right? We can take one bag, add in leaves, shredded paper, toilet paper rolls, and grow a lot of plants. And that's the whole idea. Let me show you this. <gasps> I haven't done the video. <laughs> um, this is cilantro. I am so excited. Look at this. This is those dish pans. Aren't they cool? There they are. They're 18 quart. And I'm getting them from Walmart for under $3. That means a bucket that you buy. See the yellow bucket over there? Oh, by the way, the, that dish pan is going into the yellow bucket. So I save water on that too. And I don't get water all over the deck. That dish pan is almost as big as the yellow bucket, which is five gallons. The dish pan, the black one, is a four and a half gallons. And Kitty's excited about that too. So this works out really good. This is actually a stand. This one is actually put on my two system stand. I don't think I did the video on that. And anyways, that's how this is. And I'm keeping it covered, which I will show you how we make this cover later. It's similar to the others, but it is not because the towies will come in and eat them. So I want them to get some size. So as I was saying, the beans are fixing the soil on that and it's doing really good and it is making a comeback. It's now growing new tomatoes and all the new growth that's coming in is all green where it went all yellow before. Oh, this is that crazy tomato plant. We keep picking it. Look how short it is. To me, it's like a toy. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't it? Well, you're a toy. It's like a toy. I don't know. I haven't put anything in here. I'm probably going to root something. But, oh, there, I think there was a worm there. It went back in. There's all kinds of stuff in there. I love layering. Layering is really important because even if your soil starts to dry out, it will always be damp where you're layering. That's really important for plants. Nature layers. Nature drops leaves and branches. A big branch that hits the ground and lays on top is a layer. Think about that. Just remember and look around at nature. Purslane, good way to grow purslane because it's all over the deck in its own thing. I have no idea. Is it a pepper tree? I'll have to ask Gary. It's not a moringa. Definitely not. I don't know. I'll have to ask Gary before I yank it out. So I've got some lettuce growing down here. This is a purple tree color. This one, see if I can lift it. Look, I collect water and I can make compost tea. Isn't that cool? That I have the video on and that you can see how to make it. I love those and I have never had one fall down yet. Okay, we started now new radishes because we finished the radishes in there. It was fantastic and you can see in the video how I did it. You know I do the plastic bag, space them perfectly and I even put a couple beans in there. Actually, I guess I put three. Green sorrel doing really good. That's been here for years. So that's been doing really, really good. This I just sprinkled lettuce in and I covered it with tool. I literally sat the dish basin, dish pan on the tool and then I just flip it over. That keeps the towies out and the bush tits came in this morning. So that keeps them out. On here, this really doesn't belong here. 
this top, I don't know if I can get it off, there it goes, is really for a, a larger container. It's actually for a dish pan. I made this one for a dish pan. Only one cucumber made it in here. I don't even know what they are. They came up from seed. I think it was with the tomatoes, and I believe Gary said it was one of his apple cucumber. And he had an apple cucumber, and he thought the seeds didn't look good, so I shoved them in there, and they grew. Well, that one may make it, but in the meantime, I sprinkled. You may be able to see a bunch of lettuce seed in there. Now, why did I do that? It's coming from here, because I can move lettuce. You can't grow it that way. Let me tell you this right now. You don't want to grow a field of lettuce and grow it that way, because they'll stay really tiny. Nature tells them there's no room, so they won't grow. But the moment you pop them out and give them their own container or put maybe maybe three or four lettuce in a container like that, they'll flourish into great big plants. Won't they, Kitty? Here I haven't done anything yet. So I'm, I'm debating on what I'm going to do here with the old swing. I think I'm going to hang things. I did this for fun, just to see if I like the idea of hanging things. And I think it's going to work. So I'm going to hang stuff there. I've got a tomato growing. This just volunteers. There is my moringa still growing. It grew all through the winter. You know why it grew through the winter? That's glass. And that protected the trunk. So even in the cold winter, because the trunk is down there. See how big the trunk is? It thought it was warmer than it was. So it didn't count the temperature on the leaves. It counted the plant, the temperature closer to the base where the soil was, so it worked. Think about that. So I've got just some weeds coming up back there and mint coming up, Swiss chard. The lettuce, I've been leaving for the goldfinches, but I've been pulling them. See what happens when you leave too many? They just bolt and go to seed. This is all gonna be cleaned out. I may start some seeds. Here's the other tomato plant. Still growing tomatoes, it's that patio tomato, see? I don't know, it's full of tomatoes. I mean, we pick, look, they're still growing. Isn't that something? They're still producing. The only way to keep this one going, if there's not a time clock in this particular one, she's very interested, is if I do a cutting off of it. I've been doing a lot of cuttings. I bought some sun golds, I did cuttings, and now I'm gonna place them around the yard. So all I needed was really one plant. And I did the same thing with the 100s. You do cuttings, take a little piece, I should do a separate video on that. Put it in some water. As soon as it roots, cut it. As soon as it, as soon as it roots, then you want to plant it. And then once you plant it, cater to it a little bit, and then it will take off, and you should be fine. Because this is a hybrid. So if I keep the seeds, I could get something better. Maybe a plant that looks like a real plant. Not a little tiny toy. But I could get something that doesn't do anything much. So I don't know, we'll have to see. Like I said, I'm still cleaning. I haven't really done much here. This one was under the deck. I went under the deck and found this growing. And I thought, well, what good is that tomato plant growing under the deck? So I took it, you probably saw it two weeks ago. It looked terrible. That is all the soil, the stuff I don't care for, but it's loaded with leaves and it made a comeback. The plant drooped only because I picked it, really. And it's coming back, and I think it's going to do really good. It should be a nice big plant. So there's no use under the deck. I don't go under there that often. And this, this is old beans. I've got some beans left on here. And again, celery. I might leave the celery because I love celery. I just don't want to grow it with other plants. And I've got strawberries back there. Look, 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 look at how full. Look at that. So full of strawberries, and they're still growing. I'm gonna do something with that. And then on top, I've got pomegranate trays growing there. And those are from seeds. See what happens when you eat a pomegranate and you spit the seeds in a pot? They grow. Let's see what's under the pot. Oh, oh I should move them somewhere. Isn't that cool? I should move them. That is really cool. That's why layering is so good. And then again, another lettuce. Gary brought this up. He found it, I think, under the house. And I might make a bird bath out of that. It's a nice old bird stand. I think a bird bath would be real good. So what did we miss here? What did we miss, Kitty? Okay, so here I'm going to get ready to get very serious. Now I did clean this out. And last week on members, I went live because I wasn't going to do a video on it. And what I did was I just came out here and just worked. That's all I did. And I said, talk among yourselves. So I just went live on members only. What it is, it's a two system. This is got walking onions. See, this is another layer, but I'm going to move this one somewhere. It's another pot. 
and then this lifts up and this has got oh, wow look at all the tiny earthworms already I can let me back up I can lift that put kitchen scraps in it any time I want I water the pot I've got a whole video you'll see how I put it together where the holes go and everything it goes inside the soil there it will take care of that's a black beauty zucchini then when it runs down here out of here I'm going to do this differently maybe this year see that I've got instant compost tea for all my plants now because think of how rich that is and I'll probably borrow some earthworms from that I'll see I, there's probably earthworms already in there but that's going to run out that fills up in there is a cover on it so this way no mosquitoes can get in it see it's just full of little holes it catches in the top pan stays in the bottom flower pot there and then I can water all my plants so it's a win-win I don't have to come out here and make compost tea but I still can I love making compost tea all right so in here I'll decide what I'm going to do I have celery coming up here there is a nice little tomato plant if I decide to keep that tomato plant that celery goes and this celery has already gone the seed and this is why we have so much celery. Do you know what celery seed looks like? Do you know how expensive it is in the store? Celery seed is so fine, it blows everywhere. So once it hasn't, it's right now it's in the flower stage. But the seeds will be little tiny brown seeds and they literally blow. I can imagine if any birds eat it, if they don't digest it, they'll poop it everywhere. So you'll have celery growing everywhere. But that's it, so let me step back. Oh, and the surprise I was going to say... She's not here right now. I have to be so careful. That stake is held on with yarn and it goes all the way up there. This was cut off years ago because it stopped working. It's just Christmas lights. Oop, don't me mess with that. She's got two babies. I'll show you. I'll get my camera up there. I'll show you. She has two babies there and I don't want to mess with her because she is not... She doesn't act like she really knows me though. She's not that friendly. So when she sees me come out, she leaves. So yes, with everything going on, I didn't even realize there were eggs in there until afterwards that she had to kind of back off and she goes somewhere. I don't know if she's back yet. Nope. But see, I try to stay out of her way. I don't want to touch anything and I want everything to stay put. That's why I haven't done too much with the plants there because of that stake. The stake is holding up that nest. So we don't want the nest to come down until the babies leave. And that's it. So you saw my tricolored sage before. I haven't moved these back out in the garden yet. I've got other flowers I did move, but I left those. I might leave it in a pot and leave it out here for me to enjoy. Because I can come out here and I can do a water fountain. I can go live. I can answer questions. We can have a round table. We all know something different. So we all should sit around and have a round table. Maybe on soil, maybe on container gardening, whatever you want or hummingbirds, and then I can build hummingbird things here under my tent now. Let's hope it does not blow away. So far, so good. And that's it, and this, this I'm doing cuttings in here. I just brought this up from my main garden, the bird garden. I love these, so what I did is I've got two here. I know you can't see it. You know what? I'll take the tool out. Now, I love putting tool around things because it keeps everything up. See what I did? See how easy it is to do cuttings? This was a long stake. When I, it was like a long stick when, I, when it actually broke off. So when it broke. So I cut a piece. And the top I left some of these. I could have cut some more of the leaves off when I was saying I left some of these. I left the leaves because they're so beautiful. Technically, you'd want to take a little bit more off, but I'm watching it. And then with these two, see how there, there's a lot of growth on this side? So what will happen with that, with that one is they'll bush out and have like a purple. This is purple... It's a purple Russian purple kale. These will, if they take, they'll grow and be very bushy. And this one will grow straight. And I've got a little water in there right now. I keep an eye on the water. No mosquitoes get in there. Make sure it stays well watered. So there's a little water on the bottom. And that's it. Like I said, the tool is to keep anything from bothering it. Sometimes all you have to do is lay a little bit of tool. That's why you'll see tool laying around sometimes. Even here with the beans. See what I did here? I just laid it on top of my beans I planted here. So bean coming up there. There's one there. There, he, These are all coming up. Now, I could leave it, but if a toey, if I, you know, leaving it, it's not going to hurt anything for a few days. But if a toey comes, they're, they're notorious for pulling out little green plants. Their California toeys are brown. And you'll see them if you're in California. They pop in and out of the totes. And they're actually not eating too many insects a few maybe but they're going for the teeny little plants and they they kind of scout around for this stuff 
it's like, oh, this is the most tender plant. Then they'll come in there and they'll pick all the tiny little lettuce. So that's why I have to keep it covered. And they're not scared. They're not shy. They will come right to the door and they will sit in there right in front of me and just pick them all out and their whole mouth will be full of green lettuce. So I think I've showed you everything. This is tomato. See what happens when you drop tomatoes in? They grow. I got to get it out, but this is the first thing I'm going to get out. So I think you've seen everything. I covered my sink with the tote lid. These tote lids, if you get the black ones, I'll tell you something right now. You cannot cut them. This is really hard. These are made for stacking. Like they can take 100, 200 pounds or whatever. And so these are heavy duty tote lids. You would have to cut it with a saw. But that's not to say I can't make a cover out of it. And let me tell you something. You can staple through these tote lids. A paper stapler. So I made a cover to protect my sink and keep it clean. Oh, look, the hummingbirds are coming. And that's what I use these tote lids for, or maybe a windbreak or something. The only tote lids you can really cut are the ones from the 18-gallon. I know the Sterlite cut. I think the Rubbermaid will cut too, but they're thinner tote lids. So those are easy to cut with the scissors once you start your hole. Okay, so you know about my three-tier. They collect the water in the center. See? It goes in there and it goes inside here, so they collect water. You've seen the bucket. I can put that with the hole there and it goes straight into the bucket. We can save water. That's a video I haven't done. And then um, that's basically it. Or you could just let the water flow. And there's another one that was that was fun to do. That's the it's a trash can I got at the dollar store. And it kind of was a basket weave. And I lightly, quickly brushed it with some brown paint. The tester paint I get. And that's how I do that. Okay, so we wa went and did the deck. Kitty is gone. Kitty, do you want some broccoli? I think I have broccoli. I shouldn't call her until I know. She was probably, oh yeah, there we go, a little bit. I'm still debating what I'm going to do with this. Um, here's a better one. We'll take this one. Do you want your broccoli? Do you want your broccoli? You got to chew that up? Oh, she's going to go in the house with it. Okay, so I wanted to do an update on what was going on. I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to leave this because it's here. If it wasn't here, I would do it differently. But now these are so portable. I can move any of this stuff. The table can be moved. The planters I'm making can be moved. If you're using any table, any chair, that's what I love about it. You can move it where you want. And then if it gets really sunny and I want my cilantro out of, let's say, 110 degree weather, I can move it either underneath the gazebo, up against the house. Because up against the house here, we have more shade in the summer and then in the fall the sun goes back across and then it's just all blazing sun. So I can move anything and that's what's really great about these planters I'm making. You can make them out of floral pots, you can make them out of flower pots, you can make them out of trash cans, you can get a dollar store, 99 cent store, anywhere you can make them out of dishpans. I do that too, don't I kitty? So I think I've gone over everything I was going to go over and we'll come back in probably another week or so and I'm, as you can see, I've been working. I've got my little container out there got my stool and I can come out here and plant what I want and we'll see what I end up doing with the center because I don't know myself. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow, right kitty? Bye-bye. On a bonus, if you've got milk jugs and you don't know what to do with them, make some holes on the top, make a hole there too so the air comes out and then this way you can water, look at that. And you have a nice watering can. And the reason you want to hold is if you hold it in and the, there's no air, then sometimes it will block up and it won't come out right. And she knows that too.